Welcome back to the RBP. It's me, your host, Ross Bolin. I'm here with Jared Borislow, as is tradition. He is your co-host, otherwise known as J-Bone, and most recently, Cuckdis Jack. Jared, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Aside, aside from Jared, I have Frank Ocean uh, to my right, and I wanted everyone to know I'm wearing one of the first pairs of Yeezys I ever bought. Jared, the Adidas 350 V2 Beluga. Obnoxious orange stripe uh, down the side. And I always feel a little dangerous when I record in Kanye's shoes. Like I'm liable to just say anything. I might start comparing myself to Walt Disney and my bitch to his. And somebody stop me. In all seriousness, we're talking almost exclusively about death and mourning on today's episode. I'm still kidding. Jared, hit the button. Back to you, Jared. Am I supposed to say something now? You just told me to hit the button. (laughs) Does it not make you a little uncomfortable when you fly still? Like, this is just sticking our middle finger up at God. Like, he left us down here to rot, and we turned it into, like, a proverbial paradise of sin, just flying around all willy-nilly with our dicks out in the wind, vacationing to Mexico. While he's up there like, what? Are you shitting me, guys? Sir Dick Branson is flying into space for shits and gigs, and people are dying, Jared. Richard Branson. Did you see the fucking video of him on the way back in? Like, calling people? I can't get cell service on a plane. But just who who would he need to call that wouldn't have been watching? At some airports, you do need to call the Uber when you're still on the runway. Um, So maybe he was calling an Uber. Man... It still blows my mind how much Uber changed airports. Like, do you remember the first time you went to an airport and Uber existed? And it was like, and then it was chaos and they had to start making Uber lines at airports. And you went to it, you'd show up to the airport and be like, oh, sorry, you got to go to a different wing if you want to use Uber. Yeah. At what point do we have the flippening where the Uber line becomes the taxi line and the taxi line becomes the Uber line? You know, like the, like the Uber line is closer to the terminal and the baggage claim than the taxi line. Like, how much is Big Taxi paying for this prime location? Did you just say the flippening? Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Jared, we had a listener hit us up and ask if people were just snapping necks left and right before the no diving signs were installed in pools, saying that they're everywhere now and water can't be that dangerous, and I just wanted to respond to that take. (laughs) (laughs) It's not the water that's dangerous. It's it's got nothing to do with the... (laughs) The danger level of H2O, it's it's about the concrete below. And, man, I have seen people dive into shallow-ass water. I've seen a grown man dive into a two-foot-deep pond on a golf course just for laughs. Like, it's honestly shocking that there aren't more paraplegics based on the sheer number of reckless humans willing to dive into shallow water alone. Yeah, it's it's very sad. I feel like everybody knows somebody who, like, you know... There, everybody's two degrees separated away from somebody who dove into shallow water, which is why we have the no diving signs. Do you think it was like one lawsuit though that caused all the no diving signs? Because I'm, what I'm saying is like, dude, it'll be a three foot deep pool, and there's like eight no diving signs around yeah. it. And you're I, like, I think who, it's yeah. Who would? But who would dive? It's the it's the cover your ass lawsuit thing. I mean, whoever owns the pool is liable if somebody does that. I mean, I don't think they're actually liable. See, like, that's what I'm saying. You should, they shouldn't be liable. But they are. Like, it's insane to me that you could go to a court of law, and this actually happened at some point, obviously, and argue, well, my client dove into that three-foot-deep pool and snapped his neck because there was no signage. Your it's, Honor, we demand money. Okay, well, imagine this. Imagine you're at a Costco, and somebody's eating one of those delicious Costco hot dogs. They spill ketchup on the ground. I turn a corner. With a, down with, the with a, I turn a corner with a massive tub of peanut butter filled pretzels, slip in the ketchup. I'm suing Costco. How is that Costco's fault that some dickhead customer spilt ketchup all over the floor and I couldn't see over my massive tub of pretzels and I get to sue them and make money? It's, that's so shitty. In Liar Liar, Jim Carrey's secretary gives an example. She says uh, that her neighbor had a, a, a burglar fall through her skylight and land on a butcher knife in her kitchen, cutting himself. And then he sued her neighbor and was awarded $10,000. And Jim Carrey's like, I would have got him 20. Um, <laughs> There's no I, way that's actually, that would, that, that would happen like I that. I adjusted though. those numbers for inflation. But like, that's how the law feels here sometimes, you know? I've, I have heard of cases like that where somebody was in the act of committing a crime 
and then was able to sue for like a civil thing because of something that happened in the course of that crime. So I know that does happen. But I don't think falling through somebody's skylight, like they're trespassing on your property. I don't think if somebody's trespassing your property, you can sue them for something that happens on your property. Do we let Cosby out of prison? Anything can happen. (laughs) It's so true. Like I said, saw him live before all this happened. Great show. Uh, Uh, Now I look back at that not fondly. What was your favorite swimming pool activity as a kid? What I mean by like super soakers were my jam. Obviously, a huge fan of squirt guns and just blasting people in the face. It's my thing. I, I had a few that I liked. Um, why are you laughing so hard? You just blast people in the face. Wow, that was you know it really came to fruition later on in life. So I liked to you know how pool noodles have the hole in the middle. I would like to sit on the pool noodle and then fill the pool noodle up with water and then blow into the one end of it and it mm. shoots water. It's like it's like a tuba. But it shoots water out of people. Yeah, I always respected you, that kid at the pool that was willing to do this, but I wouldn't put my mouth on that thing. God knows how many kids have stuck their pee-pee in there. I don't think... Oh, you know how it was as a little boy, Jared. Any hole you could find. You think little kids at the pool were sticking their pee-pee in pool noodles? You never had sex with a pool noodle? <laughs> I've never... Wow. Uh, not, not that I know of. That's how the fleshlight was invented. <laughs> Guy was fucking a pool noodle and went, there's got to be a better way. Aubrey Marcus's dad was just like banging a pool noodle? Shouts to that guy. He has a lot of money now. Also loved the diving board. Big fan of that. Really enjoyed it. High dive. I was a was diver. Was the best. Did you know this about me? A Olympic? lot of people. Nobody knows about me. Not an Olympic. Uh, Amateur. I know an Olympic diver. When I was uh, pro- like... So do you. Oh, yeah. Wait, I don't know her. Cassidy Cook. I don't know her. That was on OCC. Different podcast. But uh, anyways, Wait, I... Just because you met her... Oh, oh, you never... You weren't on the show. No. I, I, know, I understand now. I, I thought you were saying that if you met someone on a different podcast... It didn't count. You didn't know them here. No, I'm not on that podcast, Ross. That'd be strange. So I was a diver. I uh, So I, I could do backflips into the pool when I was like three. And my mom was like, oh, look at this guy. Little prodigy. My little prodigy. You know how moms are. Uh-huh. Signs me up for diving. I took diving lessons for a bit. And then I graduated up to the higher high dive. Like I mean, the high one where you look at that and you're like, damn, that's high. Probably like 30 feet. And I was like, deuces. Oh, you didn't like that one? No. I was out. How old were you? How old was I? I don't know, probably like five. What the fuck? Maybe seven. How long did this passion of yours last? From age four and a half to five? Like six months, yeah. What in the hell, man? I thought you were talking about like being a high school diver. I don't think you get to say you were. Like, I can't say I was a pianist because I took fucking lessons when I was eight. I mean, if you saw how I looked in high school, they wouldn't let me wear a Speedo on that campus. Because of your hog? No, because of my obesity. Oh. But, uh... I mean, oh. the hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this kid is a high schooler with such a big dick that they, they're like, dude, I'm sorry, you can't be on the diving team. And if you and if you want to be on the diving team, you need to wear swim I pants. I fucking guarantee this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> they make this dude wear swim pants. This is why we're trying to make swim pants a thing, though, for the kids with huge hogs who can't make the fucking swim team because of the goddamn Speedos. Like, this is insanity. Put on some swim pants, kid. Who decided that every swimmer had to wear a Speedo? Like, uh, in diving, it doesn't make that much of a difference, right? Like, Honestly, I understand the drag, you know, like, for speed swimming. Look. Which is what we're calling it now. Every kid who <laughs> who's ever joined swim team, though, that's a that's a has a penis goes are you fucking kidding me why the why the shit do i have to wear this what has happened it's for the coach i really i I know it's for the drag or whatever but it's like listen again like what if i've just got a fucking hog man that thing's a rudder now you're making me uncomfortable now now you're turning erratically in the water now it looks like i've got hemorrhoids like a horrible case of hemorrhoids well what about the dude with the small puppy what about him ross well, he's fucking fine. He doesn't. He's probably a great swimmer. True. They say that about swimmers. A lot of good ones. Small puppies. Or they're just able to really tuck well. You got to have one or the other, though. Some you can't just have it f- just uh, obstructing your streamlinity. Yeah, it can be like a you know streamlinity. Is that mm-hmm. you're saying that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it could work in your advantage if you like a little bit of a you know aerodynamically tucked. The, the you know the water bounces off of it. What? How do we start talking about this? Well, I'm not sure if you know this, Jared. <laughs> There's also a no running rule at the pool. Oh yeah, I uh, I actually love reminding people of that because frankly, if you're dumb enough to run around a pool, I'm high and mighty enough to climb up on my soapbox and tell you to stop running at the pool. 
It's it's not an age thing. Like I've been doing this since I was a teen, and you, I smoked cigarettes. So it's not like I was like some angel rule abider. I was a bad boy, Jared. I've seen some shit. So you're smoking a cig in a be- in like a beach chair by the pool, and the little kid runs by, and you're like, "Hey, kid, no no running, <laughs> hey, kid." <laughs> No running at the pool. Yeah, because everybody fucking knows that. You know why? Because the pool is filled with water. And we splash that water out all around the edge of the pool. And if you're running around the pool, you're going to slip and crack your freaking melon open. You doofus. Sit down or get in. Yeah. Or crawl. I hate watching people run on like cement, like wet cement. You ever, you ever see people run on wet cement? Yeah, at the pool. And I yell, no running at the pool. And then I feel good. Like I've done some. It's it's because like that's a weird thing because like you're you're doing it in their best interest, but you're also getting an authority high from it. This is the closest I'll come to being Karen. No running at the pool. That's it though. You can literally do anything else around me. I do not care. Commit arson. They, Have at it, but just don't run at the pool. They pour gasoline into the pool, light the pool on fire, and you're like, that's fine. Then you light your cigarette on it and walk away. I'm cool with the purge. It's it is what it is. Just like don't run at the pool. The forever purge. What, what the hell? I cannot believe we've gotten to this point. They were like, fuck it. Let's just name one the Forever Purge. And they're like, what's the premise? It's like, oh, well, now the Purge is all the time. And it's like, isn't that just Murderville land? Yeah, well, let's just change that to the fucking title. What the hell? It's just the Purge all the time now? Forever? Is this the last one? It's got to be, right? It's forever. Forever. But the whole point of the Purge itself, in the first Purge... And the very word itself means to purge your... It, I, fuck, I can't define the word with the word. You're cleansing yourself of your demons in that 24-hour period. That was the whole point. Now we're purging forever? I'll tell you this, Ross. One thing I won't be doing is binging the purge. What? <laughs> Get it? Binge and purge? Binging the purge? Yeah, thank you. Like binging the the whole series, all three mo- four movies. How yep. many are there? Well, there's the purge. There's too many. There's purge of Ween. It's Halloween purge. No, that's not. There's that's not a movie. Purge over. It's Passover purge where they kill all the Jews. Okay, that was. That's not what that's called. <laughs> That'd be a bad one. Nope. I'm Jewish. I can say it. It's that's also not how that works. I don't think. Back right, to you, Jared. I'm, but I'm not positive. What? Why would I send it back to you? Abs- that is how it works. Good God. But go on, I'll let you talk. Best pool game? How do I fucking transition away from that? Um, th- you ever have the, one of those balls that you can like skip it across the water? Like a skippy ball? I feel like any ball, mo- a lot of balls are capable of being skipped across the water. Those are fun, and I think we'd be remiss not to mention... That's not uh, a game, that's just being able to throw an object. Throwing a football in a pool is fun because you can dive and lay out for it and stuff. I was thinking more in the direction of like Marco Polo, you know, a classic pool game. That's that Marco Polo is the most overrated shitty pool game ever. That's the classic like, all right, there's eight of us in a pool. We're all really bored. Okay, yeah, but it's about finding the one person who sucks, and then you can all do <laughs> fish out of water and get away with it, and just and just torture that person with it. The fish out of water is such a dumb rule. Why don't you just stay in the pool? Because it's about risk and risk management and learning. <laughs> Start investing. And they'd always like make yourself. sounds. You make sounds and be like, and they say fish out of water, and then they open their eyes, and you're like, nobody's out of water, bitch. There are two kinds of people. Those who were strategic and passionate when they played Marco Polo, and then Jared's who were like, what the hell is the point of fish out of water? What do you mean, what's the point of fish out of water? It's about freedom, Jared, and fighting for it. But Speaking you- of which, chicken fight. Great pool game. Oh, that's a dangerous one. You see, you're worried about people cracking their melons open. I never liked that one. Never a fan of chicken fight. Not one of my faves. You people are psychos. Get off each other's shoulders. One of us is going to get hurt or drown. Gouging in each other's eyes. It's always, there's always dudes trying to get girls to play this with them. Get on my shoulders. We get it. Like, we get it. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a creepy proposition. Like, hey, let's do a chicken fight. One, uh, your privates are now on the back of my neck. Two, we all know there's a chance one of your tops come off in this chicken fight situation three you're not chickens you're people you're human fucking beings i, I feel like Have chicken self-respect folks yeah i feel like chicken fighting is not a thing anymore as much because of the little reasons you laid out no no it's just sweaty dudes doing it with each other and it's even weirder some kind of strange masculinity battle going on in the pool that nobody wants part of 
Like they're sweating so much that you can even sense the sweat outside of the water on them because they're in the pool? That that was the worst part of high school was dudes trying to prove that they were more badass than each other. What the hell was that? We were like 16 years old. You pants your boy? Gotcha, bitch. Uh, look yeah, at this. One time my boy Nathan pantsed me. It, this was in middle school, so it was fine, right? And it wasn't. I guess it wasn't fine, but it was fine. Um, pantsed me in the lobby of our our uh, middle school. And uh, I still remember the shriek I let out. And it was... But were you dong out? Similar to you. At the, no, I had, I had some... Uh, some whitey tidies on a la Walter White, which was something we're going to discuss in, later in today's show, actually. Which part? You'll have to wait and see. Um, but it was it was a shriek similar to the one you let out the Stanley Cup. Oh. Yeah. Something like... Yeah, like, nothing... Shit like that. Why would you call attention to yourself when you have no underwear on? You know, in that moment when nothing but like a sheer piece of white cloth and stands between your hog in the world at that age is just terrifying. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Thought I was going to prison. <laughs> you know? Categories is a great pool game. Remember uh, that one? That's the one where once they say the category, you like swim you across the pool. You had knowledge about it or some shit. You had, to, you had to know stuff for this one. I wasn't a big fan. Sharks and minnows was more up my my alley. Yeah. yeah how about uh, breath holding races? <laughs> Whoever can hold their breath the longest. I started smoking crack at seven, so that wasn't my lung capacity was no. I loved that one. It was good. I still do that. Whenever I go to a pool, um, whoever I go with, you know, I'm like, hey, want to see if I can hold my breath from one side to the other? And they're like, yeah, sure. And you know, then they go back to doing whatever they were doing. And then I try, and I always fail. But it's fun to try, Jared. Who can hold their breath longer, me or you? I'm gonna bet you, um, based on several factors. I have asthma. Is that a factor? What the fuck, really? I have exercise-induced asthma. Fun fact. Exercise-induced asthma. I was, uh, I was born premature, and one of my lungs didn't open up, so I was in the ICU, the, the NICU, for like a week after I was born. Lung issues. Shouts to all the NICU babies mm -hmm. that are out there. There's a shit ton of you. And NICU nurses. I thought you were, that's where I thought you were going with it, but. Also the nurses. And doctors. Sure, doctors. And janitors. All right, everybody who works at the NICU gets a shout. Let's not leave anybody out. Everybody that works there. Cafeteria people. And I think that will close our segment on no diving signs. <laughs> this episode of RBP is also brought to you by Talkspace, the easiest and most effective way for you to get positive growth going in your life today. When you're in a low point, you might feel alone, but over 50% of Americans struggle with their mental health, so clearly you are not. We all talk to our friends when we're experiencing issues, but... They don't always give us the advice we need, and it can be hard to open up to friends and family. So Talkspace therapists give you the support you need to feel your best. They have thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. I think you'll be amazed at how much progress you make each week that you attend therapy. As I've said many times, I've been going to therapy for over a decade now. I credit it with the vast majority of personal growth and success that I've experienced, and I credit myself and my willingness to put in the work in therapy to give my mind, body, and soul the support they deserve. Uh, Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment or, you know, awkwardly having to meet with a doctor in person, if that's not your thing, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7. They'll engage with you daily, five days a week. The positive effects of therapy will create lasting change in all areas of your life, your relationships, your career, your overall happiness. A therapist can help you identify the habits and patterns that might be holding you back and help you move forward in the right direction. So, start feeling better with a single message Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com. Get $100 off your first month when you use the promo code RBP. That's $100 off when you use code RBP at Talkspace.com today. Jared, what kind of uh, underwear did you first wear in life? Diapers. Second. Tidy whities Okay, it was probably pull-ups before that, but sure, tidy whities It was pull-ups, um, yeah. Yeah, I meant, I meant, I actually meant like, I guess after baby stage. Yeah, tidy whities Some Hanes classics. So little boys, we all get, we all get tidy whities I feel like we all get stuck with those. And like the normal progression is like you, at some point you start wearing boxers uh -huh, and exactly. that's a big deal. That's where I went. 
suddenly you're wearing boxers and you think you're like your dad or something. Especially if you grew up when Jared and I did, because like our dads didn't wear boxer briefs yet. Like that wasn't a fucking thing in the '80s. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was in like the 2000s that people started being okay with that. Um, and then at some point after you go to boxers, like down the line, I remember somewhere in college, people were like, "You're still wearing boxers." And I was like, yeah, what the fuck are you wearing? Like, boxer briefs. I was like, what the shit is that? I thought that was a weird thing that just existed on commercials. Yeah. I didn't think that was a thing anybody actually used or bought or wore. So I only knew, I wore boxers, yeah, until, I think I wore them into beginning of college, maybe like even through college. I don't even know. I think I switched to boxer briefs after college. So I only it may knew. may have been after college for me too. I can't remember, but it was like deep into life. I remember thinking, I would see boxer briefs and I'd be like, oh, those are only for athletes. Like, those are compression shorts is how we first knew them, you know, compression shorts. Yeah. That's what I first heard of boxer briefs being referred to. And I thought, oh, I don't, I don't athlete. I don't need those. I'm not, I'm well, not going to compress different. anything. Those were compression shorts. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's the difference between boxer briefs and compression shorts? One's just tighter? Boxer briefs are designed to be worn all day. Compression shorts are for athletics. Well, boxer briefs could be considered compression shorts. Compression just- shorts are what you're, softball dad wears you know what i mean softball dad he's out there like ready to like just fuck shit up hit dingers and drink beers crush wings go home wake his wife up and yell at her but yeah i think that, i think it came, <laughs> it came about uh because they invented very comfortable fabrics right that they could make boxer briefs be more comfortable than boxers to a point softball dad hates his family softball dad does he play, is it like beer league softball? I uh, yeah, I think all softball is beer league softball, Jared. Um, okay, so but my point is with this segment is that like boxer briefs, I I don't understand how the man convinced us men to to do this to us. Like why? Like I want to revert back to boxers, man. Like boxer briefs are annoying the shit out of me. Suddenly, why are we shoving our dicks and balls into tiny fucking satchels to be carried around like a coin purse? What happened here? Whose idea was this? Prince didn't even wear underwear. And we're now caging ourselves up. I don't get it. So what's your biggest issue with boxer briefs? The lack of breathability. I think the whole idea was like people didn't want them swinging around and hanging around, but it's like the, if the alternative is this just this compression that, that, that never ends, I don't want it anymore. I See, I actually think boxer briefs are more breathable than boxers, but my issue is... This is the riding up. They ride up on my thighs. I have big, meaty, juicy turkey legs. The, yeah. And, well, I mean, that's a problem for chicken leg fucks, too, then, because they ride up on me, and it's annoying really? as hell. See, I would think that box briefs for you would be like boxers for other people. Just like... <laughs> they just say, my legs just... <laughs> that's a gross image, Jerry. Like Why'd you do that to everybody? Your legs don't even touch the bottom they, of yeah, your there's no, briefs. there's no friction between my legs and the actual briefs themselves. <laughs> there's no compression <laughs> at all. <laughs> I snorted again. So you know, I'm laughing hard. That maybe that's part of it. Is that I actually started like working out legs. Some my legs grew like a centimeter, and now the boxer briefs touch, and I'm <laughs> I'm upset about it. Is that what it is? What the shit though? I went back. You you went back. Yeah, I'm wearing little kid boxers today. I'm the Benjamin Button of underwear now, <laughs> and I might be wearing a loincloth soon. Are you going to wear tidy whities ever again? No, these are like little boy boxers. Like my twig and berries just blowing in the wind down there, Jared. I don't give a fuck anymore. What Wait, your question? Are you going to go back to tidy whities If you're reverting, if you're nah, Benjamin too Buttoning. too far back, bro. When he, well, what the he, hell was Walter White doing? Like, everybody should have seen that as a red flag that he was going to do meth and sell it because, dude, you're a grown, you're like a 52-year-old man. Why are you wearing tidy whities I'm going to, I want to go along with you here, actually. I actually think that all humans, Benjamin Button, when it comes to underwear, because we go diapers, pull-ups, boxer, bi- diapers, pull-ups, tidy whities boxers, boxer briefs. Now, you're going back to boxers, you're probably going to go back, a lot of dads wear tidy whities a lot of older men wear tidy whities and then they wear Depends, which uh-huh. are adult pull-ups, and then, then they just wear straight-up diapers. Then to dust. Ashes to ashes. <laughs> This fucking episode has gotten completely out of control. So I actually am I'm on board with you because I'll probably go back to boxers and then tidy whities A lot of a lot of older men wear tidy whities They like the way it feels on their on their berry and in their dingle. <laughs> yes, yes, Jared, they do. 
and that'll about do it for our <laughs> segment <laughs> on fucking underwears. Yes, underwears. Hey, you want to hear something cool? I do. Mm, that's the sound. That's ASMR. Meet ASMR. Bacon. Seriously, if you could see and taste the bacon that we're listening to from moinkbox.com, you would order it right now. Right now. Right now. But for now, we're seeing it, tasting it, hearing it, and it's delicious. I'm telling you. You've got to go to moinkbox.com today. It's our new sponsor, Moinkbox. New sponsor. Brand new sponsor. Very stoked about this. Jared and I, obviously huge fans of meat. I love meat. I've been waiting for a meat sponsor for so long, and Moinkbox is the perfect partner. Perfect. Perfect. The best bacon, the best steak, the best chicken, the best salmon you've ever eaten, and it won't come from a grocery store. You'll only find it on the family farm and caught by independent Alaskan fishermen, and that's why you need moinkbox.com. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork, and chicken, and wild-caught Alaskan salmon direct to your door, helping family farms become financially independent outside of big agriculture. Their animals are raised outdoors, Jared. Their fish swim wild in the ocean, and moink meat is free of antibiotics, hormones, sugar, and all the other junk that you find in prepackaged meat aisles in your local grocery store. Yeah, Ross. My favorite thing when we talked to them, they were like, yeah, so they actually kept, during the pandemic, a lot of, like, local farms open who might have closed down because they work with, they source from these family farms and these smaller operations that don't pump your their meat full of all these antioxidants or antibiotics and sugar and all this other stuff. So look, we're all trying to be more conscious not only with our own health and what we put into our bodies, but also with where our products come from. And that's what makes Moink Box such a perfect partner. Uh, sign up at moinkbox.com slash Ross to get a year of bacon for free. Are you serious? A year then, what? A year this? I'm, yeah, a year of that sizzling sweet bacon that you hear now. Sizzle. Sizzle squad, baby. Free year of bacon. And then pick what meats you want delivered with your first box. Change what you get each month. Cancel any time. Moink was founded by an eighth-generation farmer who was featured on Shark Tank. Host Kevin O'Leary said it's the best bacon he's ever tasted. And they yeah. get a year of it? They get a year of it. We agree. Uh, Jamie Simonoff, creator of the Ring Video Doorbell, by the way, which we have here at Bowling Media, invested in Moink. Join the Moink movement today. Go to moinkbox.com slash Ross. Right now, listeners of our show, free bacon for a year. That's one year of the best bacon you'll ever taste, but for a limited time, M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Ross. That's moinkbox.com slash Ross. Oh my God. We're going to get so many good meat picks. From the uh, from the listeners, yeah, hit us with your with your bacon pictures, please. Sizzling bacon pictures, especially those get me real turned on. I went to a car wash recently, Jared, and uh, it reminded me just how horrific of an experience going to a car wash is. Now, I'm not talking about a drive through car wash. I have a uh, a 2021 Tesla, and they tell you when you get this thing, you know, you're not supposed to take it through one of those car washes because of the type of paint or some shit. I don't fucking know. Okay. It drives itself. I do what it says. It's a robot. I'm scared of what it will happen if I don't. Wait, so you, you just listen to your car blindly, and you'll do whatever it says. You're, you're, a, you're subservient to your Tesla. Already, yes. The AI has fully overtaken me. I am one of the first to be considered just a human, um, you know. Slave. I'm a human slave to the AI. Yeah, to the robot car. Um, so I went to a car wash. That's It's right around the corner from my house. You know, H201, you pass it right there. And uh, it, it looks like it sucks, and it sucks on par with what it looks. And uh, and the sad thing is I knew that. I've been there before. But the other day, I was really annoyed by how gross the inside of my car was. And I've got a vacuum here, and it's got the piece that you can take off and, like, use as a handheld vacuum. But it doesn't really work well. And I've had, like, six of these in my life now. I'm 34 years old. I've been through several vacuums. And that pisses me off, how they never work properly when I want to do the handheld version. When I want to clean out something like the inside of my car, get the doormats and shit, floor mats, not doormats, but <laughs> doormats as well. So I get real pissed off and I take it around the corner of the car wash. It's like raining, by the way. I don't know what, what I was doing. I was having a day. And uh, the dude that's that's at the window telling me like, here's, I'm like, listen, man, I know it's ra- like about to rain. It's been raining. I already kind of cleaned the outside. There's some bird shit I'd like you to get off though. That was kind of crusted over. And also it's really the inside. I want the inside cleaned. Well, which package should I get? <coughs> Excuse me. So guy starts running through the various options that they have, none of which I can understand and lands on something called like the executive package. 
And I'm like, how is it that that's what the fuck I need? The executive package. This is the easiest car in the world to clean. It'll take you 10 fucking minutes. I don't even feel like arguing with him. I'm, I'm looking at this dude and I'm just like, fuck that. There's no way I'm, I'm getting into it with you right now. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, it'll be 60 bucks. Pull up to the you know, next station and, and this other dude will take care of you. So I pull up to the next station and the other dude that's going to take care of me looks like he's having the worst day of his life. And I'm confident that that's what he looks like every single day. Car wash people are just generally sketchy fucks. The people who own them, speaking of Walter White, are generally sketchy. If you own a car wash and you're listening right now, you're like, yeah, because you are. You're generally sketchy people. There's something about you that's a little bit off, a little bit different. And if you're not a car wash owner or car wash employee, you know exactly what I'm talking about too. Because when you go to the car wash, you feel like you're being had every time. Even if the prices are listed right there on a board, you're like, I, I, these guys are taking me to the fucking cleaners right now. And it's also like the amount of water that they use for their operation. The newer ones, you know, the really nice fancy ones they're making now are like really, you know, a lot less Conscious water. Conscious of that. Yeah, yeah sure. But, like, but the, the old, old school like, ones, the one you like went to, the one I went to. They nope. probably use like 18 gallons of water to wash your car. And the irony is that I actually have this like a really environmentally conscious car cleaner that they recommend for the Tesla that, that goes well with the paint that, so you use very little water when you wash your own car. And that's what I've been using. But like I said, it was the inside that was the concern. And they were like, yeah, we'll do this like plastic treatment, like some leather wipe down. And I was like, now, now this is a Tesla, sir. Are you sure you're okay to use those? And he was like, yeah, you know, we'll Google it. Dead ass serious. And I was just like, fucking car wash people, man. Like, why did I come here? I knew this would happen. I knew this is what it would be like. And I've been here 40 times in my life. And it's the same every time. And I leave being like, they didn't even wipe out the cup holders. Or like they missed the whole back seat. Or one wheel. You know, something's always wrong. And it's just like, what the fuck, guys? There's also the awkward problem now of like, the, the, when you check out at a car wash... And it's like, would you like to add tip right here? And you're just lazy as shit like me. And you're like, well, fucking logically, this makes no sense. They haven't even done the thing I'm going to tip for yet. Why would I tip but screw it 15%? And then when you go to get in the car because they're finished, they don't, it feels like they don't know that you tipped already. And you're like, do I, t is he waiting for a tip? Am I like, is he about to stab me? What is this? It, <laughs> this is why I don't get my car washed. And now I get it. I just need to let my car become a filth wagon like yours. Thank you. So, one, yeah, one time I, I got a car wash for the first time in like five years. And one of my friends, I was driving him the next day. And he's like, dude, when'd you get a new car? Because, like, I'm not kidding. My car changed, like, the gradient of color changed probably by 25%. That's, that's, I'll be honest with you, man. The old, the old sedan I had, right? I, I rolled it like a Jared Mobile, right? The fuck, man. When you got an old ass car, like, fuck it. Who cares? And I didn't wash it for a long time, and that same shit started to happen, where it was like, like the, the when I went to finally wash it, like, y one wash wasn't going to do it. You I was going to need several, like, it's like coats of paint, yeah, almost, you know what I mean? You had to wash yeah. this thing several times if you wanted to get it back to where it was supposed to be. So at some point, I just gave up. And with the Tesla, I went a couple months without washing it, like, after that initial month of, like, well, you know, like, wiping it down before I went to bed, wore off. And... Dude, like a bird shit on the side of it and I let it sit too long and like getting that bird shit off took fucking forever. You got to be careful, hon. Yeah, I parked my car under a uh, pipe in my parking garage a couple of years back and then I was gone for like a week on vacation and I came back and there was just a massive rust streak. Oh, down hell. My, down my car. Oh. Did you see that video of uh, the girl in Dallas during the, the Austin, Texas freeze or whatever? Or I guess it's all of Texas freeze in Dallas. I and, think so. And uh, she parked under the one pipe that burst, oh, and her yeah. entire car was her covered car in was ice. just a fucking block of ice, dude. <laughs> this is a giant ice cube. It's crazy. So this got me thinking about the sketchiest types of employees yeah. that you have to deal with as a consumer. And, uh, you know, obviously as somebody who smoked weed in my day and purchased tobacco pipes with which to smoke my illegal drugs um, from... Friendly head shops. I'll tell you, head shop people are up there. And that's like, you would expect it. 
like it's obvious some of these places, right? Like it's obvious. Like the people who work at a head shop are gonna be a little sketchy. It's like nothing against head shop people. We are just like a little bit sketchy. Like it's a head shop. And generally, I can't tell who's in charge. Some of you might not even work there. You're just hanging out. When's the last time that you were mistaken for a service worker when you were at a establishment? It's been so long. I mean, because I'm in and out if I go to anything, you know? It was like a month ago for me. I was at a patio bar and I was going out to the water cooler to fill up my dog's water bowl. And this guy was right next to the water thing and his dog was looking at me like, dude, I want some water. It's hot as shit. So I asked the guy, I said, hey, do you want me to get some water for your dog? And he goes, yeah, could you also get us another pitcher of water, please? Like, you know, like I'm, a, wa- humans? Like I'm a waiter. Did you hit him over the head with the pitch, the fucking bowl you had? No, I was just like, no, I, I don't work here, sir, but I'm still going to get your dog water, you asshole. Like, you're right next to the water thing. You're making your dog just, like, chill there and look at the water. That was an anti-Semite, Jared, that you dealt with there. It must have been. He can't wait for the purge over. <laughs> <laughs> Water park employees, theme park employees in general. But I feel like water park employees, like, listen, nobody wants to work there. Nobody. If you're if you're like, fuck, I want to work at a theme park this summer, you don't pick water park. That's where if you didn't get the job at the regular roller coaster ride theme park, you have to go work the water park. Because that's just swimming and being in, in little kid shit and piss all day. I disagree. I think those people, I imagine they have to be like CPR certified, unlike carnies. Carney is the worst. And I'm not talking like Six Flags over Texas or, or Walt Disney World or whatever. I'm talking like, oh, look at that empty lot. Now there's a fucking pirate ship and a Gravitron in it. Like well, That's the kind of Carney I'm talking about. Well, yeah, Carneys are obviously sketchy. They're Carneys. <laughs> Small hands. I kind of wish I would have worked as a Carney for a year because they travel around, right? Yeah, they smell like cabbage. Do you see the video the other day? At least once a year. Did you just say you wish you were a carny for a year, yeah, Jared? It's not like excuse. traveling for a year after you graduate from college. You don't just go become a carny, man. Did you not watch American Horror Story? I didn't. It's fucked up. So, the every like I think once or twice a year, you get a video of some carny who hasn't put together his ride correctly, and then the ride just completely malfunctions. Like and the kid dies, and it, well, sometimes people die, or like somebody gets decapitated sad. by a rocket. Yeah, or like a spinning teacup. There was one the other day where the uh, I think I think it might have been the, the spinning pirate ship or something. One that goes like around in a circle, like one, like a mini like Tower of Terror type thing. Uh, and and he didn't like adhere it to the ground properly. And every time the ship would go up, the entire ride would fly up in the air, and the and the carny almost died. You ever get a hand job on a Ferris wheel? <laughs> no. What about a merry-go-round? That seems like it would be a bad place. <sighs> Ferris wheel makes sense. Yeah. No, did you, you're, you're on the... Yeah, nobody wants to get jacked off on a merry-go-round. <laughs> well, if you think about it... Gravitron. The merry-go-round... That's where I want to get tugged. <laughs> the merry-go-round is kind of jacking off the horse, right? You know what I'm talking about, though? The horse goes up the pole and down the pole okay, and shit. Jesus Christ. But you know what? I'm th- it's more like the, the merry-go-round is repeatedly impaling all of the animals. <laughs> How would you get a HJ on a Gravitron? <laughs> You know the Gravitron, right? You're up against the wall, and you can, like, spin upside down and stuff. And like, some people can stand place, up on it. And that's the number one place in the world, the 69, the Gravitron. <laughs> because it's giving you everything you need to be sideways. Have you seen the people who can stand up on the Gravitron? And, like, everybody else is, like, g 6 to the wall. And then this one dude is just standing up, like, flat. And he's, like, standing up... Uh, yeah, fuck that guy. I love that guy. It's got to be a carny, right? No, that's the same guy who's doing the stupid water, the water jet ski pack out on the ocean. Oh, we get it, dude. You fucking work here. Or you've done this so many times because you just got nothing else going on. You're riding the Gravitron over and over and just doing abs all day. <laughs> You're hitting the fucking jet ski pack. Oh, showing off for the fucking middle-aged moms. Cool, man. Imagine working out abs specifically so you could stand up on the Gravitron. Who are you trying to impress, though? Hey, you, kids. Look up the pictures of it. I think the pictures are so funny. I've seen this shit. I can't look at pictures of it. It'll make me sick to my stomach. One time I did, by the way, speaking of getting sick to your stomach, that's a dangerous line between, like, the Gravitron's fun at a certain level of drunk, and then, like, you need to not ride the Gravitron because you're going to puke. And when you puke in the Gravitron, 
That shit goes everywhere, just like if you pooped or came in the Gravitron, turns out. Turns out? Popeye's employees, by the way, are way the fuck up there and in terms of sketchy employees, and we know why. It's because they don't even, they're, they're literally, they're ordered to not give you the correct food, which is like, obviously, you have to be a certain type of person to want to work there. They were literally given, if you, if you ever worked at Popeye's, you'll know that there's like a letter from National Popeye's that says, hey, it's actually part of our business plan for you to incorrectly give people their orders. Dude, the Popeye's closest to me, they just got flagged, like downgraded nationally because they've been giving out too high a percentage of orders correctly. Mm. And the experience isn't there. So I've stopped going. Because it's not the grab bag of yeah. fun that it usually is where I open up the bag and go, holy shit, look, red beans and rice. I ordered fucking corn. Yeah, then they got to ship people in from the shittier Popeyes in order to work there. When they're like, you want white meat or dark meat? And I'm like, dark meat. They're like, you want spicy or regular or whatever? I'm like, spicy. And I'm saying these things and I'm like, damn, should I be saying the, the opposite of what I want? Because <laughs> is this mind game? Like, I don't, I'm... <laughs> It's confusing. So, like, when you get one, like, this location close to me that actually serves you the correct thing, it's like, fuck y'all, man. Y'all y'all are hiring incorrectly in there. You've got the wrong standards. Pick your shit up. Well, Popeye's mm. people are fucking, they don't give a fuck at all. They'll put whatever in that bag. <laughs> whatever. Here you go, motherfucker. Have a nice day. Can you imagine, like, have you ever seen, have you ever seen anybody just sit there and look through their bag and then stay, stay and complain at a Popeye's? No, you know why? Because they will whoop your ass. <laughs> that whatever you get is what you got. Now move along. <laughs> it, the only people that I would say are inarguably sketchier than everyone else on this list so far are used car salesmen. And again, it's just an inherently sketchy job. You oh, have, somebody died in the trunk of the car they're selling and they know it. And, like, it's, just think about the job from a like a logistics standpoint you they don't know anything about these cars bro like they know very basic shit about these cars so they have to sit there and make this used ass car that a dead body was pulled out of six hours ago sound interesting to you and you know you don't like it everyone there knows that they don't want to be there because if it was up to you, you'd be buying a new fancy car or some shit. And as somebody who's only gotten to buy a new car once, I can tell you, the used car buying experience is depressing as hell. Oh, and then they're like, oh, we got 0% APR financing for 2.5 months. And then after the fifth month, don't worry, you only have to pay $15. And it only goes up like 30% every two periods of cycling. And you're like, what the fuck I'm are you like, talking man, about, I'm sir? Like, you, have a, you have a calculator and some fucking <laughs> notes? Like financing a car is the biggest clusterfuck in the world. What there, is happening in here? I'm yeah, no, bro. I fi like the packet of paper alone that they handed me last time I did this. The size, the sheer volume of pages. I was just like, this is, this can't be right. This shouldn't exist. I shouldn't. E I shouldn't even be allowed to be doing whatever's happening right now. It's too many pages worth of financing for a fucking 2005 Lexus sedan, dude. Yeah, and when people walk in and, like, some people go, hey, here's the deal. I can only afford $150 a month payments. Can you make that work? Guess what? They're going to say yes every single time. It's just going to be a deal that's not going to be good for you in the long run. Y'all are so sketchy that an entire industry exists to check you. Carfax? Carfax. The Carfax. Yeah, you better ask to see that Carfax or whatever. Who do you like better, Carfax or Starfox? Star Fox, no hands. Do a barrel roll. No hands. <laughs> no hands. No. <laughs> Do you mean no cap? No, no question is what I meant. No question. Star Fox is my favorite. Why did you say no hands? <laughs> That's my favorite fox, dude. I know somebody about a pet fox. <laughs> you know, there's people who try to pull this off. Pet fox. Where do you draw? Like the line has been clearly put there in the sand for us. Pick one. Cats or dogs? It's easy, folks. What are you doing? I don't... The, the, the ferrets and the foxes. You've got a fox now? A fucking fox? Did you watch Fox and the Hound? Do you know what this... This movie ends poorly, Jared. You have a... I thought you had a pet fox. Because the other day I was in your closet and I saw this, like, fox tail in your closet. And I thought... Oh, no, that's my... That's, a, that's my weekend outfit. Oh. <laughs> Saturday night outfit. Shout out to all the furries. How many people do you think listening at this point think I'm a furry, though? Like, half the audience, maybe? I mean... A furry with a foot fetish? I think... I mean, yeah. 
I mean, you, you said it before, like, there are hot costumes. I think you said it before. Mean, I've said it what? before. What do you mean I've said it there before? There are some hot costumes you look at, you're like, damn, that's a hot costume. Yeah, like, like, like not, you know, Care Bears, though. No, that's not, when, Care Bears aren't hot. But, like, you got Lola Bunny from Space Jam, like, yeah. That's a cartoon. You're talking about a woman wearing a Halloween costume, or are you talking about a cartoon? I'm talking about a woman wearing a Lola Bunny costume. In the, in the, in the, but... It's but the car, but the costume is the cartoon. Yeah, and this you pick the most confusing possible one though. Pick how about like a woman dressed up as one of the one of the Mortal Kombat chicks? That's that's not a furry. That's a, that's just cosplay. Sonya, that's that's cosplay. Cosplay and furry are two different things. But there can be furry cosplay like a woman dressed up as Lola Bunny. Are you mansplaining furriness to me right now? Oh, do I not need to? You definitely don't. I actually did a while back because I said if you were a reptile which had scales and it's not furry, is that a furry? And you said no, and I said yes, and I was oh right. God, you've upset me, Jared. I'm gonna move on. All right. Today's episode of RBP is also brought to you by Ten Thousand. Ten Thousand what? Ten Thousand. Oh, that's the brand. Ten Thousand. I've been wearing their seven-inch interval short with the liner and their lightweight shirt, uh, working out in the CrossFit. Garage, I will be honest with you, it is a bit toasty in there. We have a small fan that is highly ineffective, and it is quite, quite hot in the Texas summer. But that is our little office gym here, and I love it in there. So I've been wearing uh, 10,000's lightweight shirt, and it is, it's, it's nice. And it keeps my neighbors from being exposed to my horrendous nipples. Um, but it has tons of features like silver ion for odor protection, breathable and lightweight shell fabric with stretch Optional liner that is very comfortable and prevents chafing. It's the perfect workout shirt. Perfect summer shirt. Lightweight, breathable, quick drying. 10,000 makes the highest quality, best fitting, most comfortable training shorts I have ever worn. The uh, interval short is the one I've been rocking, but at the core of 10,000 are three core training shorts built for all the ways you train. The interval short is versatile and great for, uh, you know, High I mean, intensity interval training. Short runs, spinning, metcons, anything else you can think of. The foundation short built for durability for tough gym days and outdoor adventures. And then the se- the session short, excuse me, super lightweight, perfect for running, yoga, and mobility. It's also great. Um, yeah, I uh, people don't think of me as an athlete, and usually I don't feel like one. But when I put on my 10,000 like, fitness gear, I'm like, oh my God, I-, I could go run a marathon right now. I can't, but I feel like I could, and I look like I could. 10,000 is a direct-to-consumer company. There's no middleman, so you get premium fabrics, trims, and techniques that other brands simply cannot afford to give you. A team of over 200 athletes test their gear to ensure the perfect design, fabric, trims, and fit. Pick the short that is best for your training and then personalize it with custom liner and inseam options. They've got over 10,000 five-star reviews, free shipping and returns, lifetime guarantee. Their stuff is awesome. Now the official clothier of Ross Fit. 10,000 is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase. Go to 10,000.cc. Enter the code RBP to receive 15% off your purchase. That's 10,000, T-E-N-T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D dot C-C. Enter the code RBP. 15% 15% off your purchase. New sponsor, so y'all make sure you support them. Hit the website, check out their stuff, use the code RBP when you buy. Yeah, just check this stuff out. It looks awesome. Very, very, very functional. This is the official clothing of Ross Fit, and Ross Fit includes Jared Fit, but we don't call it Jared Fit because it's... It's just still Ross Fit. Yeah. And the Ross Fit gym. I have a short trash or not trash for you that uh, was also sent in by a listener. And it's one that we've never discussed, and it's been a minute... When you're pulling up to a light and the right lane is the right turn lane and uh, there's nobody in the left lane next to you and you're not turning right, do you stay in the lane or do you switch over and get in the lane to the left, therefore opening up the right turn lane for anybody that may be behind you? Is it a trash move to sit in that lane if you're not turning? You're saying the right lane both goes straight and can allow for a right turn. You're pulling up to an intersection, a stoplight, four-way stop. Yeah. The right lane can turn right on red. Absolutely not trash to wait in that lane. That is that. That is a straight and right lane. If it was just a right lane, it would be just a right lane. That'd be a dick move. But if there's nobody in the lane to your left, it's like you can't just get over, guy? Who? You, I mean, what if you're already at the front? What am I going to do? Throw it in reverse and then go back over to that lane? Like, what do you want me okay, to do? Okay, so you're pulling up to the light, Jared. You're, 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 you're 50 yards out, and you notice 
you're in the far right lane, you're not turning right, and this thing's not turning green before you get there. You don't go over to the left one? It's not a conscious decision I make. Maybe I would do it subconsciously, but I wouldn't go, oh man, I need to be a nice guy to that guy behind me and move over to lane. And here's why I think this law, it, your, your ruling on it is correct. Because if it is straight and right, you're fine. And I know it sucks sometimes to get stuck behind that guy, but here's why it has to be okay. Because there are too many circumstances where, I'll give you an example, I go through the stoplight to get to the grocery store. Dude, it's, the turn is right there. I have to already be in the right lane. Legally, I also can't switch lanes during an intersection. So I either need to be in the right lane already before I go through that intersection, or it's chaos and I might hit somebody or it's dangerous, fuck that. So I sit in the right lane, and anybody that gets stuck behind me and starts honking or whatever, which doesn't happen in Austin because it's a bunch of pussy drivers, it, it, it's too bad. It happens. So sad. But can it be frustrating? Does it suck on occasion? Yes. Do you really fucking need to get there 30 seconds faster or whatever and quit pretending that shit's on anybody but you for not planning better timing-wise, road rage guy? You suck. Road rage people are the worst. What are you doing? You try, is this, a, is this like suicide by self moron? Like, what are you trying to get done in traffic? Do you read the fucking newspaper? It's chaos out there. You're road raging because you're going to be 30 seconds later? What a fucking stupid move. Do not honk at people. Don't roll down your window. Don't throw up the bird. Just shut the fuck up and get to point B. It's simple. Yeah, road rage is one of those like almost ununderstandable phenomenons. Why are you so mad, sir? Dude, when people honk at me, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? And my horn is now either a fart or it does like the f the intro to the show. It does. Both are funny to me. Um, but it's just, it, I just, I still can't wrap my head around that one. When I, every once in a while, I'll be in the car with somebody who's like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, dude, who cares? It's one of those like superiority complex things. You're like, oh, I'm a better driver than that guy. I need the person in the car with me. To know that. It's not I even guess. that though. I'm a great driver. I just don't fucking care. It's like, dude, who, like, we literally, if we survive this trip, I'm so happy. <laughs> like, I do not care. Change your framework and maybe you'll stop road raging. Road people rage is. Who road rage. It's too dangerous, man. It's not worth it. I mean, sometimes. That's why I said we dab at people. Like, if somebody throws a bird up at me, I fucking <laughs> hop one back at them, dude. Just a dab. And they're like, what? I tweeted about this before. So, I think it's absolute bullshit that only Jeep drivers and boat owners get to wave at each other when they see each other, right? Oh, I do this shit with Tesla people in Austin. It's a living hell. Dude, Constantly wait. waving. Do Tesla people do that now? Yeah. No fucking way. I swear to God. Especially if I see a twin. There's not that many color options, and there's not that many car options, so there's a shit ton of the same cars on the road. You're telling me there's a Tesla wave? Yeah, dude. Is this the thing that pushes you over the line to buying one so we can wave at each other? And you know you're allowed to wave at anybody you want, right? Like, nobody can stop you. Well, my brother and I uh, are huge proponents of the Nissan Cube, as I everybody know, knows. I'm very aware of this. And we try to start a thing where, you Cube know, boys. Jeep people wave at each other, boat owners wave at each other, apparently Tesla owners wave at each other. We were trying to make it so if you drive a Nissan Cube, and you pass another Nissan Cube, you do the dab. Cube dab, and you... you cube dab at them. So were cube owners not douchey enough to get on board with this? Is that the problem? Well, it's hard to find a cube owner. We actually don't own a cube. That's the issue. Oh, well, you can't really, you know, lead the charge as well. I know. And you know what? Honestly, there might be Tesla people listening who are like, what the hell is he talking about? We don't wave at each other. Maybe it's just me. But I've been doing it. Every fucking one I see, which is just, it's every four cars here. It really is. So really, if you see a jackass driving around Austin just waving, that's me. I've said this before as well. Um, I will take a free car and I will, I don't care if you want to wrap it with like the, your face on it or whatever. My car sucks. I'm not going to buy a new car because the market's trash right now. It's a piece of shit car. Um, my two choices, if you're going to give me a choice, are a Subaru Baja. Uh, not produced anymore, but very sick. I would prefer also the uh, additional floodlights that you have to pay for. Um, or a Nissan Cube. Either one. Fine. Baja, Cube, floodlights, any additional... Uh customization of the cube yeah the cube has to have the stock uh so every cube i don't know if you've ever been in one before has a small little circle uh it's a carpet circle that goes on the dashboard and there's no point for it uh it's just a, it's like a it's a fuzzy little carpet circle that goes on the dashboard Do you know what they call it according no. to my brother jeff aka jeff the cube man yeah they call it cubic hair 
this is a real thing in the Cube community, or is some shit y'all are made up and trying no, to push on people? It is stock. It comes in every Nissan Cube. It comes with Cubic Hair on the dashboard. What is wrong with you? I have some shouts that have added up over the weeks. One is for Blair Shapa and her new now fiance. Congratulations. Just got engaged uh, early July. Both listeners of the podcast, congratulations on your engagement, James and Blair. And then uh, let's see if I missed any... uh... There was another one. Oh, Jack Satowski. What's up, dude? Appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the message. And uh, stay up. Those are my two shouts, Jared. There was another shout. Um, Hard to keep up with. Yeah, he's he's probably not going to be getting it until the next episode because I lost oh, it. That's too damn bad. That's too damn bad. You'll have to wait till next You wait till next week. We hope you enjoyed your Wednesday show, though. And holler at Jared and I if you ever want shouts for somebody for their birthday or whatever. Y'all are listeners. You support our show and what we get to do for a living. So uh, the very least we can do is throw you some shouts at the end of the episode. Thank you all, though, for listening. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's. If you want more, Jared and I will be back on Friday on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast as we are every single Friday with an ad-free episode, brand new, a whole new, usually about an hour of uh, podcast content with no ads in it um, that is supported and brought to you directly by you, our listenership there on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast, where you are the backbone of everything we do at Bolin Media. We appreciate you. We're trying to climb toward 2,000 patrons. We're just over 1,000 right now. So if you love the show, if you've enjoyed Jared and I uh, doing the show and you want to hear us do the show into the future, if you ever find a month where you're like, you know what, I've got five extra bucks, I can support the guys and the show, then go to patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast and you'll get an ad free additional Friday episode each and every week. If you're in that RBP gang tier, you can also join the enforcer tier, Jared, get columns. Uh, get mental health mini-sodes, join the OG tier if you really want to throw down and support the pod. We appreciate everybody who's there, Jared. Yep, and I say this every time. If right now, if you, if, if listening to this episode gets you caught up on the show, you're actually not caught up because you have over 80 episodes of the Ross Bullen podcast to on listen Patreon. to on Patreon. And you get access to the full backlog. Ton of content yeah. there. As soon as you sign up, you get last week's episode, the week before that's episode, the week before that's episode, etc. and so on. You get the point. As well as all the columns from last month and the month before that. So if you're bored right now, if you're traveling right now, if you're caught up on RBP as of this moment, go to patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast and there's more for you right there in exchange for your direct support. Thank you so much. And uh, support our sponsors as well. Two new sponsors today, 10,000. Go to 10,000.cc, enter the code RBP, as well as uh, moink, moinkbox.com, slash Ross. Get that sizzling bacon. I can't believe it's a free year of bacon. What an unbelievable deal. Moinkbox.com, slash Ross. Two new sponsors. And then, of course, Talkspace.com, our th- one of our therapy sponsors. We've got great mental health sponsors for y'all. We try to bring you the best sponsors possible. So... If their products sound enticing to you, go to the URLs, use the codes. Make sure you use those codes and URLs when we read them so that they know you came from RBP. That way they come back and continue to support the show, and we can continue to do the show. Again, that's the two ways the show exists, from our sponsors and from Patreon. Thank you all so much for being here again today, and we'll be back on Friday. Patreon.com slash Ross Podcast. Adios. All righty then.